spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. For the last 10 years, the U.S. men's gymnastics team has struggled for respect on the international scene. But today is a new day, and this U.S. team has a new enthusiasm. Bill Roth and Cheney Humphrey are the catalysts, and they bring a new attitude. What I try to bring to the guys and, and to the competition is I try to bring a little bit of humor so it relaxes them, because when they relax, they do better. My job is to get out there and do the best possible routine I can for myself and for my country. The Americans will meet stiff competition from the world champion Chinese team. And from Belarus, a perennial world power. It's the Visa Gymnastics Challenge. Wang Dung is over at the floor exercise area. He is from Changchung in the Jilin province. This is his fourth trip to the United States. And this is certainly one of his best events. He's a very powerful tumbler and vaulter. He's good in the leg events. Last year's national champion in China on this event, and you're going to see why. Watch the power and the explosiveness. Double twisting, double back, and he totally nailed it. This should be three laid out front somersaults in a row. One, two, three. Oh, no. He went right into that other track, didn't he? Yeah, that's the only thing you can do when you make a mistake like that is just keep going. It was a huge mistake. He was trying to do three layout fronts in a row and his timing was off. It'll be about a half a point deduction and he won't get the full bonus points that he was actually shooting for. Once again, the judges are always looking for gymnasts to do front tumbling elements, back tumbling elements. They have to cover the entire floor area and the routine lasts between 50 and 70 seconds. This is the last tumbling run right here. Laid out double. Three nations are proudly represented here. Belarus, China, and the United States. Let's take a moment to meet their athletes. Привет, я Тали Рудницкий. Привет, я Александр Белановский. Привет, я Иван Павловский. Мы приехали из Беларуси. Привет, Привет Америка. Америка! Ой, вы хорошо? Я Ли Бо. Это мой друг Шэн Джэн. Вы хорошо. Дон Джун. Вы хорошо. Вон Дон. Они все на самом деле. Поэтому мы сейчас делаем движение. Hi, I'm Cheney Humphrey, and doing the Iron Cross is a cinch for me, especially with the help of my three teammates. Hi, I'm Bill Roth. I'm Chris Waller. And I'm John McCready. Vitaly Rudnitsky is over at the Still Ring area. He's a 20-year-old out of Mogilev in Belarus. He was a national champion this year in Belarus in this event. Rudnitsky has exactly the perfect body style to do well on rings. He's short compact and very strong. There's the inverted iron cross pressed to a handstand. Another inverted cross swing to a Maltese. And another one. I don't believe he held the second one long enough. The judges require the gymnast to hold each of the strength positions a minimum of two seconds. Nonetheless, this is a very impressive routine. Nice control. Interesting dismount. Double front, half twist. One of America's best hopes over at the pommel horse is the unofficial team captain, Chris Waller, helped uh, lead the U.S. team to a gold medal at the Pan American Games earlier this year. 
Chris has always had terrific style and technique, and this event is perhaps the best place where he shows his clean form and high level of difficulty. He was a finalist in the Barcelona Olympics on the pommel horse, and you're gonna see why. Look at this opening sequence. Very difficult work. By the way, over on floor, China's Wung Dung, an 8.8, .8, and Rudnitsky on rings, a 9.45 score. Notice how precise the leg form is, clean body line. Travels all the way back across the horse. This is gonna score really well. And with the team battle well underway, we'll be back with the score for Chris Waller on Pommel Horse after this. Next competitor, American Bill Roth, has been working hard on his gymnastics for years with more than a little success. He's an animated member of this year's team. Bart Connor gives us a closer look at this gymnast who in some ways is larger than life. When you come into Temple's gym, you're going to know right from the start that I'm here. Okay, because you're going to hear me. I'm very loud. I like to keep everybody hyped up. It's not a laughing matter, mister. This is serious. And if for some reason you don't hear him, you surely can't miss his physical presence in the gym. I'm unusually big for a gymnast. Uh, I'm about 170 pounds and I'm about 5'7". You know, the quote gymnast in people's eyes is 5'4 and about 130, 140 pounds. That is the best gymnast according to some people, okay. uh, not according to me. I walk out on the floor and I'm totally opposite, totally different than what everybody else is. And that, that helps me out because I know that I'm different. I know that people will kind of go, you know, who's that? Well, uh, we're down in the training room right now, which is uh, my second home. Uh, as you can see, I've been down here a lot because of my three surgeries. I had tore my uh, patella tendon in 1991. There was a scar from that. A year later, in 92, I tore my ACL. There's a scar here and a scar here. And then three weeks later, I had tore my pec tendon. And uh, even though it's a big scar, it's, it's healed. Not as strong as it used to be, but it's doing a job. And you know, I pretty much spend a lot of time down here keeping uh, my body healthy. So, important place for me. This is Christina. This is my fiance. And credit Christina, a gymnast herself, with recognizing Bill's talent and urging him to press on despite the pain and to continue doing what he loves most. At times that I didn't have any motivation, Christina had it for both of us. I can positively say that if she wasn't there when I had my first surgery, that I probably would have walked away from the sport because there was a lot of doubt coming from close friends and there was no doubt coming from her. I love to do gymnastics. I would do gymnastics until I was probably 80 if I could. I like to entertain people, you know? And what better way can I do that than coming into the gym and doing gymnastics? From the United States, welcome back, Bill Roth. And here's Bill Roth getting ready for the rings performance. His teammate Chris Waller earned a 9.55 over on the pommel horse earlier. This is the deceiving part about gymnastics. He's very big and very strong, and you would think that he would be great on this event. This is the muscle event. Unfortunately, because he's over 170 pounds, he's at a huge disadvantage. He's not terribly strong, surprisingly enough, because it's very difficult for a gymnast to manipulate that much body weight. You can see he's struggling in the handstands and not comfortable in the strength moves. Generally, the littler guy who has less body weight is effectively more tight and stronger on the rings. He has a little swing. This is a good dismount, however. And a big performance on the still rings. Bill Roth earned five gold medals at the 1990 Olympic Festival, and that tied a record itself. Here's Vitaly Rudnitsky. We saw him earlier on the still rings. The five foot seven inch, 139 pounder is on the floor. Very powerful tumbler. Watch this laid out double with nice form. 
course, he trains with one of the greatest tumblers of all times and one of the greatest gymnasts of all times, Vitaly Sherba, winner of six gold medals. In Barcelona, oh, he's out of bounds. One-tenth of a point deduction for going out. Over on the still rings, Bill Roth earns an 8.95. He's very aggressive on floor. I like the fact that he's assertive in all the moves, very crisp. These gymnasts really try to peak for the World Championships and the Olympic Games. You can tell they're not in peak routine condition here because they're making little mistakes that uh, you wouldn't see in a major competition. But these meets are equally important as stepping stones to those big meets. Watch how much power he generates right here in a round off back entry and boom. Excellent. <laughs> John, because he has so much power, watch how this second somersault just hangs in the air right there. It's like Michael Jordan, but with flips. And the judges score for Rudnitsky a 9.150. For many, gymnastics is a thrilling avocation. But for this 26-year-old family man, Chris Waller has to take a more realistic view. If I'm doing this sport now with a, with a baby and a, and a wife and a whole family, I need to take this very seriously. I'd, in no way can I take this haphazardly and go through the next year and a half and just kind of hope that something happens in 96. I'm doing everything I possibly can to make my time in gymnastics worthwhile for myself, for my wife, and for Alexandra. And Cindy and Alexandra are in Fairfax to watch their man, Chris Waller, now performing on the still rings. And Bart, he calls himself one of the first truly professional gymnasts. Well, none of these guys are getting rich. When you say the word professional, sometimes it throws things off. But USA Gymnastics is providing training stipends for all the national team members. It's twelve dollars or $1,300 a month to help defray the cost of their training. They're all out there still looking for sponsors, but USA Gymnastics is saying we're going to sponsor you a little bit and expect more in terms of international results. Interesting, at 26 years old, Chris Waller is just getting better and better. He's learned to polish his weak points. Rings was an event where he was weak. He's gotten better here, still a little struggling in these strength moves. Oh! Good recovery. A laid out double for a dismount. And Chris Waller's routine brings to a conclusion the second rotation. Waller's score a 9.25. And so one third of the way through the contest, America leads the team battle over Belarus and China. Back for more of the Visa Gymnastics Challenge, next up is Alexander Belanovsky from Belarus. At 5'8", he's the tallest member of the team. This is one of his best events, and you'll notice his body style. He has very long arms. And notice how high he is above the horse. He doesn't even need the pommels. Mark, you can even hear the difference. Many of them slap the horse and are very heavy handed. He's so smooth. He really is. And even when he's off, he has that nice fluid swing that just keeps him going and keeps his momentum going. Really the perfect body for a pommel horse worker. Thin legs. Very long arms and short torso. For China, Wong Dung over at the Still Rings, his highest finish at the Nationals in 94 is a third place in this event. Perhaps his best quality is he's a great all-around gymnast. He's good on every event. Doesn't have any weaknesses. It's a nice inverted iron cross and a press back up to the handstand. He earns bonus points from the judges for doing that. Belanovsky on the horse earned a 9.6, the highest mark we've seen on that apparatus. Clean dismount. Come on, John, let's go get it now, kid. Come on, John. 
We asked John McCready, the youngest member on this U.S. squad, how he sees his impact on this team. Well, I'm, I'm basically just coming in here trying to help the team out and do the best I can, not worry about, you know, the finish or just hit my routines and, and give something good for the team. And to show that we do have some younger guys coming up that we don't have to worry about, you know, who, who's after these guys. You know, we do have some talent, and I think we, I want to show that we're, we're out there. And that's some sage wisdom from a man in his first senior international meet. John McCready getting ready for the floor exercise. This is one of his best events. He had a lot of trouble on pommel horse. And he was shaky on the rings. Perhaps we're going to finally see one of his outstanding routines. Look at that laid out double back. This is what the U.S. team needs. They need a powerful tumbler. In general, the U.S. men have been weak in terms of tumbling skills. The score for Wung Dung over on the rings, a 9.5, the best mark we've seen on that apparatus. That should help China in this rotation. The top three scores from each team will count during each rotation. Very clean, laid out front with a full twist. That was the third tumbling run and the second tumbling run. He actually messed up a little bit. He left out one of the more difficult parts that he was going to use in the routine for bonus points. So he'll have to finish strong here if he wants a decent score. Nice power. Very high double back. And with that big finish, we'll see if the lackluster middle tumbling pass will hurt his score when we return. You're watching ABC's Wide World of Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for our final The final performance in the third rotation on comes from the Americans the on the floor States exercise. Bill Here's Bill Roth, the 24-year-old. Powerful performer. <laughs> Bill has a very unorthodox floor routine, particularly because he's had so many injuries, a blown out anterior cruciate, a torn tendon in his leg as well. So you'll notice his tumbling style. He does not really take any hard landings. He can't take the beating anymore. See, he rolls out of that move very cleanly. Watch this. This is going to amaze you. He looks so bulky, and yet you're not going to believe the shoulder flexibility. That's called a mana. Invented by a gymnast named Bob Mana. Press on fingertips. McCready's score on floor, 8.95. This will be a front tumbling series. It's a requirement. Lay out front, lay out front, front with a full. Nice. And he'll earn a bucket of bonus points for that. Finally, one of the gymnasts is able to make their front tumbling pass. So many have struggled on that today. And that's so crucial because most gymnasts are getting their bonus points from those front tumbling sequences. The Belarusian, Ivan Pavlovsky, has the high mark so far on the floor exercise, a 9.35. Roth is heading in that direction and then some. And he's really selling this routine. Here's his last tumbling run. He's going to have to land this double. Not bad. <laughs> he is quite a performer. <laughs> Trying to work that crowd. I think Bill Roth could be really good for the U.S. team. He has marquee potential. He's a real entertainer. And if he can continue to deliver routines like that, he'll be important for the U.S. team in the next couple of years. And Bart, the judges agree. A 9.55 for Bill Roth on floor. And so halfway through the meet, our event winners in the first three apparatus. Bill Roth wins the floor exercise. The tall Alexander Belanovsky wins the pommel horse. And Wung Dung wins the still rings. In the all-around standings, Vitaly Rudnitsky leads over Wung Dung. American Chris Waller tied for third. And the team standings, America leads China by four-tenths of a point. Our first three rotations showed great performances from the athletes of Belarus, China, and the United States. Welcome back to the next three events. John Neighbor here with Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson at the Visa Challenge in Fairfax, Virginia. As the three teams move to their fourth rotation, Bart calls our attention to a couple of things to look for on the high bar.
On the high bar, watch for when a gymnast does a series of release moves. In this case, because the release moves are done back to back, the second and third moves in the sequence earn bonus points. McCready, who trains in Colorado Springs, the youngest member of the U.S. team competing here. John, I think this is a really critical performance for him. This is one of his best events. He has great technique. He took a big fall in the warm-up session. Let's see if he can make his release here. Reverse hecked, reverse hecked. Very clean. This is really an event he can show off the long lines. And as you said, his wonderful technique. Good. Nice high. Both of us and double layout, way up in the air. Halfway through the competition, Vitaly Rudnitsky was leading in the all-around contest. Now he's on the vault, and he needs a 9.1 here to retake that lead from American Chris Waller. This is a great event for him. He does the Yurchenko style of vaulting. Look at the power and the height. Oh, over-rotated. That's a hard vault to land because he has so much power and so much height. Here's America's 24-year-old Cheney Umphrey getting ready for a routine on the high bar. John McCready, by the way, earned a 9.55. Cheney's been on three world championship teams for the U.S., and he was a finalist last year in Australia on this event at the World, and you're going to see why when you watch this routine. He does a series of release moves that few gymnasts will attempt. And he just missed a medal there. He was fourth on the high bar. All right, let's see how many in a row he can do today. He's been known to go four times in a row. There's one and two. There it is, amazing. Rudnitsky's score on vault, a 9.15, and that means if Umphrey earns better than a 9.65 here, he'll take the lead in the all-around. All he has left is this dismount. Great set. It's almost as much fun to listen to the audience while he performs as it is to watch it. This really is a great release sequence. After the first move, he does three more in a row, and because the timing is very tricky, the judges award bonus points for each subsequent release move. Cheney earns a 9.525. That pulls him to within .125 of the lead. Next up, American Bill Roth on a roll after winning the floor. Better than a 9.8 here will give him the all-around lead. Boy, this is going to be exciting whether he makes it or not. His routine is so huge, so packed with difficulty. He has scored a perfect 10 before on the high bar. The word outrageous comes to mind when I watch Bill Roth. <laughs> watch how aggressive he is. Here comes a huge move. Gaylord two over the bar, perfect. because he has so much fun. There's his father. Father seems to be enjoying watching his son perform as well. Dad coached him throughout high school. Well, he really nailed that routine from the beginning right to that perfect landing at the end. <laughs> and Roth earns a 9.75 on the high bar. And after this very high scoring fourth rotation, the United States has doubled their lead over China. Here's Wang Dong, victorious on the still rings. He's got a lot of upper body power. Let's see how he uses it on the high bar. The Chinese always dazzle us with really impressive high bar routines. Let's take a look at what he comes up with today. As always, perfect form and very aggressive, clean body line. Bit of a miscue there. He did a reverse heck, which was clean, but he didn't come out of it quite the way he wanted to. A good cover up. He's going to do the dismount. Really, not a lot of difficulty in this routine. Most of the gymnasts are combining difficulty back to back. 
He was supposed to do a release sequence there, and he got in a little trouble. That's going to hurt him a lot in the all-around. Coming up next over at the Parallel Bars, Alexander Belanovsky was victorious on the pommel horse. An interesting story. On his way to the airport to come here, his wife Tatiana was surprised with the early arrival of their first child. It is amazing. He called home to speak to his family, say goodbye and so long, and the baby was born a week early. So he's anxious to get home and see Tatiana and little Dimitri, his first son. That's a good combination. Out to the single rail. One of the best double pikes of the competition. Not as much difficulty as we've seen from some of the Chinese gymnasts, but a clean exercise. Speaking of the Chinese gymnasts, Wong Gung on the high bar earned a 9.1. Here comes John McCready getting ready for the vault. And the new father's P-bar score, 9.25. Here's McCready. And this is an event where he thinks he can help the U.S. team. Look at that. Nice. And he nailed it. He said before the competition, he wanted to bring a young look to the U.S. team, and that's a place where they need help desperately is vaulting. And boy, did he nail that. Dong Zhong from China mounting the high bar where the high score is still American Bill Roth at a 9.75. As we said at the top of the show, the critical thing for the Chinese team is to see if they can be consistent. They always dazzle us with high level of difficulty. But in the past, they've been inconsistent, and today they've been inconsistent as well. They need a solid routine here. A little shaky. Once again, going for the big moves, but having a little trouble. Once. That wasn't quite how that was supposed to go, but a good cover. But that was beautiful, except he dropped slightly to his knees. The reason the Americans are holding on to the lead in the team competition, they're just a little more solid. The Chinese are giving away silly mistakes. And Bart McCready earned a 9.4 on the vault, the best score so far over there. Big scoring opportunity for the United States if they do well in the vault competition. American Bill Roth is next up. A 9.4 here will give him the lead in the all-around. You never know what this guy's going to do. At the national championships last year, he did his vault. He landed crooked and landed under the judge's table. <laughs> Let's see what's going to happen today. Hey, not bad. Back at the high bar, the last Chinese athlete, Gung Zhong, earned a 9.2. And Bill Roth on the vault, a 9.5. The high score so far, that gives him the all-around lead. And with one rotation remaining, the United States leads the People's Republic of China. You're watching ABC's Wide World of Sports. The second American in this rotation to mount the parallel bars will be Chris Waller, a 26-year-old out of Mount Prospect, Illinois. His wife and child in the audience and the chance for a USA team title coming up. Best score so far on this apparatus, a 9.45. This is a difficult event for Chris. It's not his best. He has done a good job in this competition, hitting the routines that he can do well. Quite consistent. 26 years old, he's just yeah. getting better and better. It's very obvious he's worked so hard for this. There's Cindy, his wife with their daughter Alexandra, born in January of this year. Wong Dong, the final performer from China in this competition, placed eighth in the vault at the Goodwill Games, and this is the event he'll close out his competition here on as well. He's a really powerful vaulter. I don't believe he's going to be good enough to catch the U.S. team in the team competition here, though, but look at that. Oh, no. Boy, it was good-looking vault in the air. 
it's amazing he stayed on his feet. He was so far back on the landing. It's lucky he didn't hurt himself. It looked like his legs were locked out when he landed. The last American on P-Bars, Chris Waller, earned a 9.4 here. The United States enjoying great success in this competition. Cheney Omfrey now on the parallel bars with a score of greater than 9.425 will take the all-around lead over teammate Chris Waller. Nice. Wung Dung's score on vault, 9.25. He certainly doesn't lack for difficulty in this routine. A lot of difficult moves. Not as smooth as some of the Chinese gymnasts, but boy, powerful. And that'll be impressive to the judges. He had a lot of personal goals coming into this competition, and it really looks like he's got to be happy with his performance here all the way around. All right, guys. Good job, man. And a great score for Humphrey on parallel bars, 9.5. That puts him in the current lead. Coming up, Vitaly Rudnitsky, who needs better than a 9.15 to move into the all-around lead with only Bill Roth remaining. He should be able to do it. He's got a great routine. And as we said earlier, he's been like a machine, very solid. Here's the double over the bar. This is critical. He's got it. It's a perfect distance away from the bar. And again! Oh, man, right out there on the end of his fingertips. Nice combination. This is one of the best routines of the day. Full of difficulty. It's great to see when someone that is so well prepared for competition. He really was one of the most focused gymnasts here today. Great performances all around for Rudnitsky. His score on the high bar, a 9.45. And so that sets the tone. The United States has virtually locked the team title. Bill Roth, final performer, needs better than a 9.35 to win the all-around. He should be able to do that here, but you never know about Bill Roth. I've seen him going perfectly in a routine and then just fall off on a simple move. Nice. He really seems so much more focused in competition, though. Oh, he was almost off there. You're right, though. He seems more focused, more intense. Oh, oh, oh. He'll probably get it with that. <laughs> Good for Bill Roth. Good for the U.S. team. score a 9.45 on parallel bars that guarantees Bill Roth the all-around title. Hey, Vitaly. Good job. Guys. Heartfelt congratulations being shared by Vitaly Rudnitsky, the runner-up in the all-around race. And so the last three events show Americans winning them all. Bill Roth winning the vault and high bar. Chaney Humphrey, the top score on parallel bars. In the all-around battle, Bill Roth wins and American Chaney Humphrey finishes in third. In the team battle, a surprise victory by the United States. And a happy salute to the fine performers on a well-prepared U.S. team as they soundly defeat the People's Republic of China and Belarus. For Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson, I'm John Neighbor saying so long from Fairfax.